Hey everyone, I hope you are safe and doing good. So in the series of learning C++ programming language, we are discussing OOPS concept in C++. In the previous video, we have seen what is a class, what is an object, how to define a class, how to create objects, right, with the help of examples and real life examples as well. So in this video, we'll see like practically those things. We'll be, uh, you know, creating a class, defining a class, and we'll be creating some objects of that class, and then we will be accessing whatever the you know attributes and those uh, you know functions or the methods in that class with the help of those objects right practically so i'll show you this thing with the help of a program so we'll take this example this is a class suppose account class and here we have these are two attributes string name and balance and these two are methods of this class right so we will create objects with the help of new keyword as well as without new keyword, right? These two methods I have discussed in previous video, how to create object, right? One is like uh, with the help of new keyword, it's like uh, creating pointer to object. So both ways we will discuss here and using both ways how to access these attributes and methods with the help of those objects we will see. So this video would be a little bit lengthy, right? In detail, we will see this thing practically and I'll, I'll show you how to debug that program step by step then you will get it clearly right how this program is actually running behind how the, these values is to be assigned with the help of object and when this value is to be assigned something like this right so we'll debug this program step by step fine so let's start okay so now we are going to create a class so first where to create that class inside the uh, inside this uh, main yes you can create this class inside main but this is not recommended because if you create a class inside this main function, then the scope of this class is within this main only you can use that class, not outside of this main. And when you will be working on projects, then we will be using, you know, we will be declaring classes in some other file and we will be using those classes in some other file. Like in one file, one suppose another file I have, one another file we have. So in a, you know, project we will be having different, different files. So within, you know, entire application, I'll be using those classes maybe. So always you know declare these classes outside main function so that we can use these classes within you know that entire application the entire project wherever you want to use so how to define a class class keyword and name of the class i'm taking what is that class account i mean pascal naming convention will use so first word or first letter of every word would, would be capital right now here let's take these two things, these two attributes. And if you are using string here, so better better to include here, which file I have told you already when we are discussing string, string header. If you not include that also, I think by, by default using that IO stream also, these features would be added, but always explicitly include string header if you are using string, explicitly you know include vector header if you are using vectors that would be good for you that would be recommended always right so okay these two are attributes we are having and now we will have some methods so like this and there you should have a semicolon after this class so that's it we have like taken two attributes and two methods within this class account right now how to create like we will be accessing obviously creating objects in this main so we'll be accessing uh, these names this balance attributes and methods with the help of object only right so let's create object. What is the formula? What is the way to create object class name? One way is just class name and object name. So suppose I'm writing Jenny account. Right. Account and object name is Jenny underscore account or any object name you can take A, B, C, X, Y, Z, anything. Right. One object I have created. Now. This thing we have seen in previous video, if you run this, you will not get any output, but you will not get any error as well, right? That's it, compiled successfully. Now, if you debug this, if you debug this, so let's put that breakpoint here, here, account Jenny, I mean, when we are creating that object. So here you see that run and de debug that option, or you can just press control plus shift plus D. So just enter and here, See, already I have chosen this compiler, C, C++, G++, .exe. If you are working in C++, use this, G++, .exe, right? Uh, select this one. Otherwise, if you are working in C language, use GCC. So this compiler, uh, this debugger I have already chosen and run. 
So here you see variables and watch and call stack. See stack I have shown you. I mean we have discussed that stack memory. Right. So see in locals, I hope you are able to say this. We have one object, one variable, journey account. In name, we have nothing. Like see, let me just show you here. In name, in data plus, we have just nothing. Right? No name and balance is any garbage value. Right? Now let me show you. See, it now it's debugging our code. So once you click here, step over. The next step is the cursor is here now, here, means that's it. After next, that's it. It means there is nothing. Right, okay, fine. Now we will see what. We will be assigning values here. Let's delete this breakpoint here. Now how to access these attributes and methods. By default, all these attributes, method, whatever is in class is private by default. So we cannot access directly. Two methods are there with the dot operator with the arrow operator. We will discuss both these things. Now how to access just the object name dot operator with the help of dot operator one way is with the help of dot operator dot and name I want to access. So just write down the, that name of that variable or name, name of that attribute. Name is name only and equal to I am assigning name here. Jayanti Khatri. Account name is Jayanti Khatri. And next is Jenny account, object name dot balance. Suppose balance is equal to I have like maybe some balance I have or let's take like 5000 rupees, 0 0.0 because you are you're taking double value. Right. Now see here the error, the straight line. Member account name is inaccessible. Why so? Because these everything is private. So to make it public, here within this class, you use a specifier public and call it. We will discuss these access specifier public, private, protected in later videos, right? In detail. For now, first make everything public and then use for this video. Okay. Now we can access. There is no error. Fine. Now, if I debug this, if I debug this and show you, so see. Okay. First, stop this debugging. Now, at the breakpoint, here I'm adding that breakpoint like account, gen account, the object I'm creating here. So let's debug this again. And see in the variable here, just see. See in call stack, we have main, main function, because obviously that activation record for main would be pushed in that stack. So here I, I have main. Fine. Now in locals variables, local variable, I have gen account. There we have name and balance. Balance is some garbage value we don't know. So now see here. Now control is here. Now step next, step over the next line. Control would be next line. So now this Jenti Khatri, this account, this in name, this Jenti Khatri would be assigned. So in name, here you will see data plus. See, there is nothing here, just the address. Once you click, click step over, now this line has been executed and see here. Can you see here Jenti Khatri? See, this is Jenti Khatri. Right, the name and the length is 14 character and this is the address. Balance, still some garbage value because cursor is on this line now. It's not been executed. So once you click on this line, now see balance is 5000. So this is the beauty of like, you know, debugger. Step by step, what is happening, you can see. Okay, fine. If you again this, click the step over, that's it. Out, see. Posed on here now in call stack there is nothing main and something like this. Right, okay now let's delete the everything and now this we know this is how you can access these things, right? Now let's call these functions with the help of this. How to call these functions? Same name of the object dot name of the function I want to call deposit, suppose deposit and double amount. What amount you want to deposit? Suppose thousand point zero this but the thing here is there would be no error but the thing is here we are it's not getting any definition of this function so what will happen nothing it will compile that's it nothing will happen if i show you if i run this and i'll show you see nothing you will get here the output but there is one error like obviously this undefined reference to this deposit because uh, there is no we can say like definition of this function. So we can define the methods. So it's not function, call it method. So we can define these methods. There are many ways, but one way that simplest one for this video, 
here only within that class only I am defining it right so after this rather than the semicolon I am just defining this and I am just updating the balance because after deposit the balance would be plus would be added whatever the amount you deposit right that would be added and let's just here write C out and updated balance is balance that's it so I have defined this here only it will show me updated balance right and withdraw for this also let's define this here only if you want to withdraw then it would be minus from that balance right that's it so here I'm not writing any C out and all right if you want to write you can write also you can update now deposit is this so after depositing it will show some amount what amount it will show just calculate and I'm just run this and I'll, she, I'll show you what output will be getting 6000 got it now if you debug this breakpoint I have already added here just debug this again and let's see see right now control is here so in local in variable we have Jenny account in name some we don't have anything in balance we have some garbage value so step over and I'll show you in name in this data plus they see the length is zero and see this is empty there's nothing run this and see it's updated GNT Khatri length is 14 now balance would be updated see you got it 5000 rupees and okay now obviously you have to you know 5000 but now the cursor is here so after depositing 1000 rupees let me just take this step over again see the balance is 6000 right and that's exactly you get the output and now after returning from this the variables are out I mean deleted and there is no main in that step right the memory is freed so let's just stop this and now call jenny account dot withdraw 500 rupees for 500 point like maybe 50 If you run this or you debug this, let's debug this and I'll show you the output. You run this and see what output you are getting. So here we are having some variable. Just check the balance. Run this. Let me show you the name also here. Run this and you see the what changes you are getting here. See 5000. After deposit 6000. 6000 now the cursor is here. Now again step over. See 5499.5. It has been already updated. Right. So like this, this is how you can debug your code, right? Now, this is one way to create object and accessing these things. Now, second way is pointer to object. Okay, let's create that also. Rather than this, let's just comment out everything and we'll be creating here account with the help of pointer, pointer to object. So here I'm writing Jenny account equal to new and account and this this is second way basically here we are calling the constructor constructor this is default constructor this constructor would be called here also but it is by default but here you need to write down that constructor I'll discuss constructor default constructor parameterized constructor everything in detail but for this video you just you know remember this is the second way to create object but this is not object here we are creating what pointer to object we are not creating object actually pointer to object this will return a pointer to object so we are having now pointer actually not an object here this is an object Jenny account but here we have pointer to object so how to access using pointer to object one way is you have to dereference that pointer right if you remember with the help of asterisk uh, this operator this is dereferencing operator asterisk and Jenny account this because this is pointer so dereference it then dot and then you can access these things like name equal to like this one way is this right this will also work right second way is if you want to check out okay you can check out this also just move this breakpoint and just add a breakpoint here okay let's see here do one more thing access this balance as well and 5000.0 right and same to access the deposit and withdraw we use this only like
So this is how, if you create a pointer to object, this is how you can access these things, right? And we are, I'm just using these, uh, you know, brackets for this, because this dot operator is having higher precedence than, than this S string. But you want to dereference this object first, then dot operator you want to apply. So that is why I'm just putting these brackets here to increase this, uh, this uh, precedence of this S string operator, right? Now, let me run this first and show you the, you know, output directly. So balance is this. 6000.5. Now, what we see, let's debug this. Breakpoint is here. When you're creating this pointer to object, let's debug this. And step by step, we will see. OK. Now, in stack, we have this main. And in locals, we have Jenny account. See, in Jenny account, now we have some, you know, it's not object, it's pointer to object. Right? So, here we have, see. Here you should out of bound, this address is out of bound. Rather than here name, it will store the address. Right, but rather, right now some garbage value is there. Length is some garbage value and balance is also some garbage value. Okay, now let's run this. Control is here, so step over. The next line is, see now Jenny account dot name. After creating this pointer to object, we have here some address because pointer in pointer we have obviously address of some other variable so it is having the address see the address right now let's run this again we are not having any particular name now let's run this again see this is jenny account is having address so it is not object it is pointer to object step over see here now we have jenty khatri 14 because this line has been executed now cursor is in next line see the, now the balance 5000. Let's run this. 6000.5. After withdraw, let's run this. 5500.5. Right? And if I again, now the cursor is here. Means, if I again run step over, means out of this program means. <coughs> means variables and all gone. Out of the memory. I mean, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> variables and all destroyed. In call stack also, we don't have any main and all, right? So this is the second way. Now, okay, rather than this, we can use an arrow operator as well. So rather than this, let's just comment out everything. And object is same, pointer to object we are creating, but how you can access? Simple Jenny account and this arrow. And see, so you can access any name is equal to Jenny Khatri. This also we can do. Right? So, rather than this, if you are finding it difficult, you can use arrow. This only means, this means first dereference, then apply dot operator. This arrow, this operator means. Right? So, if you are creating pointer to object, use either this convention to access the methods and members or arrow operator. If you are creating object something like this, simply use dot operator to access attributes and methods. Right? So, I hope you got this. The class, how to create objects, how to access attributes and methods with the help of uh, dot operator and arrow operator, right? And I hope you got how to debug and all. You got what is happening behind the scene, right? So I hope you got this concept. In the next video, we will see one coding exercise based on this. And after that, we will see next loops concept, right? So now that's it for this video. Now I will see you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care.